Math 3 Lesson Summary Video Reflections of a Bike Lover This lesson is a practice understanding task, which takes concepts you have been working on and applies them to new situations. The purpose of this lesson is to apply properties of absolute value to functions other than linear functions and represent these composite functions as piecewise functions. Graph the function f of x equals x squared minus 4. So we do have to reach back and remember that this is a quadratic function, and we can use our transformations to help us graph this function. In fact, all we have to do is translate down 4. So we're going to take the parabola and translate down 4. And when we do that, we get something that looks like this. And so you can see here that instead of its vertex being at 0, 0, it went down 1, 2, 3, 4. And we have our common uh, quadratic shape. If I go over 1, I go up 1 squared. If I go over 2, I go up 2 squared. If I go over 3, I go up 3 squared, so forth and so on. And it is symmetric, so it's the same on this side as it is on that side. And we get our nice parabola. What we want to do now, though, is we want to, very similarly to what we did in Lesson 3, we want to apply absolute value to this function. So the second question is asking us to graph g of x, which is the absolute value of f of x. So when we graph this, we need to think, well, what does absolute value actually do to something? And we know physically it takes any negative numbers and it turns them into positive numbers. So when we think about this particular graph, we need to, or this particular function, we need to think about what were the numbers that came out of it that were negative because now those negative numbers are going to become positive numbers. This might be a good time to use some multiple representations like tables to help us do that because tables we can at least see which numbers turn out to be negative and we'll know which ones need to change to positive. Um, some people like to look at that graphically and see where that happens. Um, when we do graph the absolute value of f of x, we end up with this. And what we see is that it was exactly the same here. It just continued to travel on down the parabola, but when we got to the x-axis, Instead of continuing down on the parabola, it turned around, and now the parabola is going up. And then when it got back down to the x-axis, then it continued on where the parabola had been. And if we think about that from the table, um, this was the point where our outputs started becoming negative. We started having negative outputs. Negative 1 was negative 3. So the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. And so that's why it turned around to come up this way. Question 3 says explain what happens graphically. Uh, when we go back to our transformations and the things we learned in unit or in uh, math 2, we learned that this shape is being reflected over the x-axis, but not the whole shape. Just the part of the shape that was below the x-axis, the part that was negative, has been reflected above the x-axis and has now been made positive. The parts that were already above the x-axis, the parts that were already positive, stayed positive because the absolute value of a positive number is a positive number. So we get this really almost like a W, kind of a pointy-ended W um, shape for that new graph. To write the piecewise function, so for piecewise functions, we're doing the piecewise function for g of x. So I would say g of x is equal to, and we know now that piecewise functions use the bracket to hold it together. So I need to think about how many pieces am I going to have. I'm going to have one piece, two piece, and then I've got this middle piece for my third piece. So I'm going to have three pieces. I need to think about where their intervals are. So when I look at it, my intervals looks like it breaks here. What number is that? That's, that's negative two. And then it looks like it breaks here. So that's positive two. So it looks like my three 
intervals are the interval from negative infinity to negative 2. Then I've got an interval from negative 2 to 2. And then I have an interval from 2 to infinity. So as we write our piecewise function, g of x, we know that we have our three intervals. The first interval is negative infinity to negative 2. Our second interval will be that in-between part, the negative 2 to 2. And then our third goes on from 2 up to infinity. So we have our three pieces. Uh, the equation of this piece, we already know. Remember, we graphed this, and that's what this purple graph was. And this one didn't change when we took the absolute value of it. It stayed exactly the same. So its equation for those numbers that are less than negative 2 is still going to be x squared minus 4. Same thing can be said for this piece over here. It, it stayed exactly the same. It's just that happy purple parabola. It just stayed where it was. So we use that also for numbers that are larger than 2, 2 and larger. This part changed, though. This parabola is no longer this positive parabola. Actually, now this parabola is facing down. So I know it is some kind of negative. And if we think back on what we learned about transformations, uh, when you reflect something over the x-axis, all you do to make that happen is you multiply by a negative. So this is actually the negative x squared minus 4. It is that same, same function. We've just multiplied it by a negative to make it reflect over the top. Now, it would also be okay if you just wanted to write a completely new function. If you wanted to say, well, I know it's been flipped upside down. It hasn't been shifted to the left or right any, but it did get shifted up four. You could also write it using your transformations and just rewrite a new one. Notice what we get is technically, mathematically, the same thing as this if we distributed the negative. This is the concept for this task. So you want to take this idea and continue it through the rest of the problems as you practice applying your properties of absolute value.